Hello everyone. Welcome to another video of numerical integration. Uh, in this lecture, I will focus on Simpson's rule only because uh, numerical integration was already discussed in the previous video lecture in detail. Uh, the outline of this lecture is derivation of the formula for Simpson rule, geometrical interpretation by an example, composite Simpson rule, and at the end, I will solve some examples by calculator. Uh, which may be interesting for you. So let us derive the Simpson rule first. To approximate the definite integral of a function f of x from a to b by second Lagrange interpolating polynomial, uh, we can write f of x as the sum of f of x k ln k of x, where ln k of x are the Lagrange coefficients. And for Simpson rule, we use n is equal to k. So the the data will be uh, given here like x0, x1, x2, or we can find the data from the given function. Let us expand the second Lagrange interpolating polynomial for f of x, which is approximately equal to f of x0 and 2, 0, and similarly the other two terms. By putting the values of the Lagrange coefficients and integrating both sides uh, from a to b. Now we have three integrals, and in each integral we have the product of two functions. For example, in this one, x minus x1 and x minus x2. So how to integrate the product of two functions? For this we use integration by parts. For example, u is a function of x, v is another function of x. So how to integrate this product? We integrate this in two parts. The first part is the first function, and to integral of second and the second part is this one so this is called integration by parts also let us denote the first integral on the right hand side of this equation is i naught and the other one by i1 and similarly i2 okay we also use f naught for f of x naught f1 for f of x1 and f2 for f of x2 for convenience so let us uh, calculate i naught so f naught divided by x naught minus x1, an integral of this x minus x1. By using integration by parts, we can say that this is the first function u and the integral of the second function x minus x2 will be x minus 2, x minus x2 whole square divided by 2. And according to fundamental theorem of calculus, we have to write x naught to x2. Uh, similarly, in integration by parts, the second part will be derivative of the first function, x minus x1 is 1. An integral of the second function, x minus x2 is again x minus x2 whole square divided by 2. Also, from equally spaced nodes, we can write x0 minus x1 is equal to minus h, and similarly, x0 minus x2 is equal to minus 2h. Now, by fundamental theorem of calculus, we have to put the upper limit minus lower limit in this. Similarly, uh, we have to integrate the second part of integration by parts, and also we have to put upper limit and limit a uh, lower limit by fundamental theorem of calculus. So, if you put upper limit, for example, here x2 minus x2 will be zero, and the other. Uh, if we put x0, uh, that will expression will become this one. Similarly, by putting the upper limit and lower limit in this one, we have this expression. And after simplification, uh, we have i0 is equal to h by 3 into f0. In the same way, uh, we can calculate i1 integral by using integration by parts using fundamental theorem of calculus and the information of equally spaced nodes, uh, equally spaced nodes, we can find I1 and also we can find I2. These are really straightforward calculation. Uh, if, you, uh, if you don't understand, please pause the video so that you can understand each step. Okay, so now we have the integral of f of x from A to B is the sum of the three integrals which we have already calculated and in each h by 3 is common. So taking h by 3 is common and this is the uh, Simpson's 
rule, the formula for Simpson rule, or we can answer this. Note that Simpson rule, rule is also called one by three Simpson rule because uh, if an, if we use n is equal to three in the general integration formula, we will have another rule that is three by eight rule. But here we use we will use only Simpson one by three rule or only Simpson rule. Now let us discuss its geometry by taking an example. Uh, uh, we will also use the Dismos graphing calculator. Let f of x is equal to e power x is a function and x naught is minus one, x one is zero, x two is one. So we have f naught, f one, f two, n is equal to two, h is equal to one. We can find the second Lagrange interpolating polynomial by putting the values and simplifying. We have this polynomial and the, this polynomial agrees with x naught, x one and x two. Now, area under the graph of e raised to the power x from minus one to one is 2.35 something. This is exact area or exact solution. And uh, by Simpson rule, we find the area under the graph of second Lagrange interpolating polynomial, which is h by three f naught plus four f one. So we can see the difference between the exact and the approximation by Simpson rule. We can see that uh, 2.36 and 2.35 both are, this approximation is uh, accurate to within one decimal place. So this is far better than trapezoidal rule. Now look at this in the, uh, on this mouse. So we can write here, uh, you can search for, uh, on Google that uh, uh, how to how to shade the region on Dismos. So I think you will have this. Uh, and then you can write e power x a to b. a is minus one, b is one. So if you write if p of x is equal to this polynomial, this was for uh, trapezoidal rule. And for Simpson rule, we have q of x is equal to this polynomial. If for a few moments you can remove this. So look at this, the green color polynomial is the second Lagrange interpolating polynomial. And the, the blue, the red color is f of x, e raised to the power x. Now let us include the shaded region. So we can see that the required area was area under the graph of e raised to power x. And you can see the small difference between the Simpson rule approximation and the original one. So this was geometrical interpretation. Now uh, let us discuss composite Simpson rule. Where n is equal to e1 only, please note this. And trapezoidal rule we can use n is equal to e1 or odd, but in Simpson rule, we have to use n is equal to e1 only. If n is equal to two and the interval a, b is x naught, x two, so we have the same rule as we already discussed. But if n is equal to four, we have x naught, x two, x two, x four. So apply Simpson rule on the interval x naught, x two, we have, f naught plus four f one plus f two. And if you apply the Simpson rule on the second interval, we have this expression by adding both, we can have h by three f naught plus four times f one plus f three plus two times f two. Or generally we can say that f naught plus f n four times f one f three, where the subscripts are only odd, one three up to n minus one. If n is odd, definitely, uh, sorry, if n is even, definitely n minus one will be odd. And similarly, n minus two will be even. So this is four times summation of all f with subscript odd, plus two times summation of all f two k or even, f subscript even. We can also write this as, the, uh, note that in the first case, 4 multiplied by f 
और सबस्क्रिप्ट और वी कैन से एक्स टू माइनस एक्स टू के माइनस वन विच इज इक्वल टू एक्स नॉट प्लस टू के माइनस वन इन टू एच दिस इंफॉर्मेशन कैन बी टेकन फ्रॉम द इक्वली स्पेस नोट सिमिलरली एक्स टू के इज इक्वल टू एक्स नॉट प्लस टू के एच सो वी यूज एक्स नॉट प्लस टू के एच हेयर एंड एक्स नॉट प्लस टू के माइनस वन एच हेयर बट प्लीज नोट दैट ए के विल बी स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम वन एंड अप टू एन बाई टू and in this case k will be starting from 1 but n by 2 minus 1 you can see if k is equal to 1 up to 5 2k is from 2 to 8 and 2k minus 1 is from 1 to 9 now let us solve example use the composite simpson rule with n is equal to 8 and 10 to approximate the given integral first let us calculate its exact value you can also find its exact value by calculator or by fundamental theorem of calculus so if you want to find it by calculator from minus 1 to 1 e raised to the power x we have 2.35 uh, this result is written already here and if we use trapezoidal rule uh, sorry simpson rule for n is equal to 2 as we did in the on the in the first example in this same lecture so that was 2.3620 and so on now let us solve let us find the integral for n is equal to 8 but uh, in simpson rule we also have to use n by 2 if n is equal to 8 n divided by 2 is 4 and n divided by 2 minus 1 is 3 and h will be equal to b minus a divided by n where b is 1 a is minus 1 so 1 minus minus 1 will be 1 plus 1 by 8 which is 0.25 so the composite simpson rule formula in this case for n is equal to 8 will be h by 3 f not plus 4 time f 2k minus 1 f odd similarly f even here in case of odd the summation from k will be starting from 1 up to 4 because 4 is n divided by 2 8 divided by 2 is 4 and in case of even summation will be Up to three because three is n divided by two minus one. By putting the values of h and the function, f up minus one will be e raised to the power minus one. f up minus one plus two k minus one into h will be e raised to the power minus one plus this. And similarly, minus one plus two k into h will be this one. So we can calculate this. how to do this by calculator please look at this zero point two five divided by three into e to the power minus one plus we also have to write e to the power plus 1 at the end so let us write it now uh, now we have 2 four uh, times summation and uh, we have to write e raised to the power minus 1 plus we have to use x or k in the calculator because calculate uh, there is no k in the calculator so 2x minus 1 and uh, we can multiply h on the left hand side also 0.25 now k is equal to 1 up to 4 This is done. Now we have another summation. 
summation of e raised to the power e raised to the power minus 1 plus 0.25 into 2k we have to write this so e raised to the power minus 1 which is x naught plus uh, 2k into h so let us write first h 0.25 is h into 2k 2k means 2x in calculator k varies from 1 up to 3 so we have 2.350417 this is the result calculated by calculator we can also do it for n is equal to 10 but will what will be uh, different uh, from above example if n is equal to 10 n by 2 will be equal to 5 n by 2 minus 1 is equal to 4 and h will be equal to 0 0.2 so let us uh, do this calculation or let us change the value of h h we have to change us 0.25 to 0 0.2 so this is 0 0.2 uh, and also we have to change the value of n by 2 and n by 2 minus 1. This will be 0 0.2 now. Okay, from 1 to now we have to write 5 here. And similarly, 0 0.25 will be replaced by 0 0.2 only. And uh, okay, from one to three will be replaced by uh, n is equal to ten, so n by two minus one is four. Now we have two point three five zero four two three one eight one, whose error is two point zero seven. Is this? If you compare, this was the exact two point three five zero four zero. For n is equal to 2, we have 2.36. So when n is equal to 2, in that case, Simpson rule uh, gives a result which is accurate to one decimal place only. But in case of n is equal to 4, we can see 350 and 350 here. I think 35040 and 3504 so this correct to four decimal places similarly this one uh, n is equal to 10 this is correct to how many 3504 this is also correct to one two three four decimal i think there is no big difference in this case okay or there is a difference because it is four five and it is four two okay so this is uh, the best method when n is equal to 10, Simpson rule is the best among all. And if we increase the value of n, uh, we will get better accuracy. Okay, next uh, I will discuss midpoint tool in the ne uh, next, next video lecture, in which I will also compare trapezoidal and Simpson rule with that. Thank you for watching the video. And see you next time.